Hi, and welcome to Psychic Today. I'm your host, Jill Roberts, and we're going to get into a couple of things today. So don't forget to surround yourself with grateful people and to be grateful, thankful, and remember that you're blessed. It's been a doozy a couple of days for me. Uh, My internet was out and I have two kids, so they kind of were climbing the walls (laughs) without any Wi-Fi. Luckily, we got it back on so I can do another show, which is wonderful. And what I'd like to talk about today is I got two amazing stones from an Etsy, wonderful Etsy shop. I cannot recommend her enough. The name of the shop is Terra Solis, LLC. Her name is Cam, and she is just absolutely amazing. She's certified as a master. Um, I can't even read. I need glasses. Excuse me. She's certified a uh, botanical perfumer. She's a Reiki master. She's a silversmith, a multimedia artist, and a gemstone guardian. And she takes such good care of the stones. And the stones that she picks out are absolutely amazing. So the stones I got from her this week are um, a stunningly beautiful and semi-polished Dow, which is... 737373 uh, Ambifoli Angel Wing Phantom Quartz from Brazil and it has gorgeous and unusual red and gold patterning. I also got a beautiful raw double terminated Himalayan Library Quartz with a light smoky tint. It has serious etchings and striations. Uh, Elysiation and embedded bits of matrix on the raw, but it's self-healed on the back. These two stones are just absolutely amazing. And she gives so many details of each stone. So what I decided to do um, was actually read you the item details that Cam provided, which is very thorough. So if you hold on, I'll be right back with these stunning new stones that will help you with so many things in your life. Because we all deserve to live an extraordinary life. And that starts now. I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, Psychic Today. I'm your host, Jill Roberts. And the first stone I'm going to talk about is the Dow Red Ambifoli Angel Wing Phantom Quartz. So it has a key that rises from the base, and it's unpolished and natural with edge sides and some raw texture. It has an amazingly high vibrational crystal soul. Its origin is from Brazil. And I'm not going to give you the weight, the the weight, the length, the width, the thickness, because you don't need that. But I'm going to read you what how Cam describes it, and she describes these things so incredibly well. So, angel wing phantom quartz is an excellent crystal to use with the third eye and crown chakras, as it enables you to gain a stronger connection to the angelic realm. Clear quartz phantoms are excellent for balancing and aligning all the chakras to the crown chakra. Those who are interested in spiritual growth and connection with higher realms may find that clear quartz phantoms particularly helpful since the phantoms inside work with the crown chakra to integrate the experiences of the higher self into the other chakras. This protective high high vibrational stone increases our awareness of the spiritual realm, past life recall, and lucid dreaming. A bringer of intensive love, beauty, and joy, Angel Phantom Quartz is invaluable in the home, especially when you surround it with other angelic crystals such as Seraphonite, Angelite, and Celestine. It will enable you to see your best inner strengths 
and increase your self-empowerment. The addition to the Angel Phantom Course inclusions offer added benefits. Here she has, one, the grounding energy of hematite, two, the loving energy of pink lithium, which provides the energy of love, empathy for others, and keeps one focused on all the important core values of giving, integrity, and selfless light work for the betterment of all. This is, again, a lot like the Azestulites in the sense of we're all working together and, of course, other Lemurians to raise the awareness of the earth, the consciousness, and together we can do all of that. Number three, she has the protective energy of Limonite. Four, the intuition building energy of Kaolinite, as well as channeling in the crown chakra, energy providing inspiration, intuition, and connection with the angelic realm, funneling pure white light into everything that one does. These minerals combine to form a crystal that is a must-have in order to be a step closer to universal love. So I'm going to digress here for a moment. If you want, you can make this stone into um, a higher, even more vibrational stone by using the um, the Azazeo Fenakite that Robert Simmons offers. He does slices of them, so they're not that expensive because I have a green one. And if you put it with the stone that you want to meditate or channel with, it enhances the stone. So he usually does it with Oralite 23. He does it with, um, I believe, New Zealand, New Zealand Carnelians, all of the New Zealand stones and Azestulites. Um, but you can get a piece. It doesn't have to be big. And with other stones like this, if you're looking for knowledge or information or whatever the case may be, it will enhance the stone. It will enhance the Azazeo process, super activation process that we, I, we have talked about. So I digress. So back to the angel phantom quartz. So if you keep it in the crystal in your pocket, in your home, or in the workplace, it additionally provides massive cleaning energies and cleansing energies. It's also known to be an excellent crystal for lucid dreaming. So you can place it under your pillow or on your nightstand and prepare to have a peaceful, restful sleep with very informative dreams. Now, I am a dream medium as well. We In an eight-hour period, we have five dream cycles. I know a lot of people claim that they don't dream or they don't remember their dreams. Well, since I started sleeping with some of Cam's quartz, uh, quartzes and especially her Lemurians, the strawberry Lemurians, I have been remembering dreams. And it's almost as if I am conscious without having to do the locked-in process of being conscious of my body asleep in dream mediumship, um, where I am remembering these uh, amazing, very vivid dreams. So again, now let's talk about red phantom quartz. Here she has, she talks about the inclusions, and they may consist of one or more of the following colors and minerals. Again, not to digress too much, all of the pictures of the stones that Cam sent me will be on Psychic Today with JillRoberts.com so you can take a look at each of these stones, okay? So the following colors and minerals are red is hematite, white is kaolinite, excuse me, uh, yellow is limonite, and pink is lithium. Now, the one I have is the red phantom quartz. The red phantom quartz is used to stimulate the first three chakras, of course, combining their energies in order to produce recognizable vitality directed towards creativity, intellectual pursuits, and intuitive endeavors. These crystals appear to be, uh, appear to those who are ready for its complex power. So, 
hematite is always, if you see any red in a stone or quartz, it's usually hematite. Most likely hematite. It's the only thing that's really red. Use the stone with respect, humility, and patience. And you can use it on the third eye during meditation. So here's some phantom quartz general information. A phantom quartz is an excellent tool for meditation and assisting one to access higher forms of knowledge. It provides further energy in healing emotional and physical situations, which are of consequence to inner knowledge. The phantom quartz is usually is useful in assisting one to meet a spiritual guide. Be grateful and take the appropriate action on the information you may receive. Cam go on, goes on to talk about how it symbolizes universal awareness and represents the phases which may be experienced during one's lifetime. It is one of the stones to be used for redemption and cleansing of the earth. Again, very much in tandem with the Zestulites. The energy of this stone works to bring together the participants of humanity to save the planet. Sort of like Rose Sophia. The structure within the crystal emanates energy to renew the spiritual health of the planet. It can be used to access the records of one's progression through past lives. The phantom within the quartz can facilitate altered states when the crystal is used during meditation. Again, these are all of Cam's notes about the stone. This is not me just talking about it, okay? When I digress and I talk about something else, I let you know everything else is Cam. Now she goes on to talk about what a Tao is, okay? A Tao crystal is recognized by the sequence of an alternating three-sided triangular face and a seven-sided face to make up the six facets of the termination, which is the tip of the crystal, okay? Tao or trans channelers combine the qualities of the transmitter and channeler crystals. Now, in a past episode, I talked about clear quartz formations. This is there as well in, you know, very similar terms, but not exactly. This is not my work. This is Kemp's. The quote-unquote seven sides are a symbolic representation and attainment of the knowledge, wisdom, and truth of consciousness of spirit. The quote-unquote three sides representing the expression and manifestation of the spiritual truth. Channel, channeler crystals help you to access higher wisdom, either in the form of your higher self or spirit guides or of angels, and they bring you love and light from beings in the higher realms. The Tao crystal allows us to receive, which is channeling, and transmit the knowledge, wisdom, and the truth of the divine by expressing them with love and integrity while providing a connection with the self and universal truth. The Tao crystal energy affects all areas of our being by assisting in the perfect state of the divine in, into physical manifestation through a special kind of balance. Hold the crystal in your left hand to bring about the perfected state of divine love. Now, we talked about divine love the other day with um, the pink fire zestulites and the red fire zestulites. So this is another um, good stone you can use. It's usually a cheaper stone than an zestulite, so I definitely recommend it. Um, I have a bunch of these, but I saw one on Cam's in Cam's store, and I just had to have it. I The only Lemurians I buy are from her. So I cannot emphasize enough how you should definitely check out her store, and I'll give you all of her information at the end of this episode, okay? So you can place a Tao on any of the chakras to align the chakra with pure energy vibration. A Tao crystal allows us to recognize the perfection and that all things... And it brings unconditional love, compassion, and enlightened understanding. So now we're going to talk about channeling quartz. You can recognize that by its seven-sided face, usually located in the front center position of the termination end of a crystal. A triangular face is located exactly on the opposite side. The seven sides represent precision within the intuitive realm of the higher mind. 
The triangle on the opposite side provides creativity, innovation, and the ability to creatively and joyously express oneself. The combination of these represent initiative and interdependence between the world of the physical self and the perfection of, quote unquote, all that is. A channeling crystal provides a means for channeling and an expression and expressing truth and wisdom from both the inner realms of perfection and other worlds. It provides a conscious connection to higher wisdom available from the higher self and the wisdom of experience and enlightenment available from higher realms. It can be used to access wisdom from within and without. It can be used to bring forth light and love from most of the truthful and knowledgeable portions of oneself. Encounters with entities from whom we can learn are possible. Now, here are some things Cam talks about what you can use a channeling crystal for. Of course, one is meditation and allowing the opportunity to gain both inner clarity and wisdom. Two, to facilitate, facilitate specific answers to, spe to specific questions. Three, to gain information in a specific area. Four, with record keepers to access stored information. There are many methods to use a channeling crystal. Experiment and see what works best for you is what she um, suggests. So now we t we're going to talk about transmitter quartz crystals. And Cam says it's recognizable by a configuration of two symmetrical seven-sided faces with a perfect triangular face in between. The seven sides of the faces represent the ability to activate precise control of the physical senses and desires in order to attain wisdom through strengthening the connection to the higher self. The three represents creativity in the attainment of unity. Now, don't forget, we are talking about a Tao. We're just going through the first one, which was the Chandler, which is seven-sided face, one seven-sided face with a triangle on the other opposite side. This is the transmitter, which is two seven-sided faces with, of course, a triangle, or on, a triangle on each side. And with the Tao, it's three um three triangle um not triangular three seven sided faces with triangle triangles on the other side but here we're doing with the transmitter it's a 737 seven combination and it indicates personal improvement creativity and manifestation the combination of the two 737 seven, um together provides Quality of ease, both in change and progress together with variety and experiencing higher knowledge. The combination blends the higher self with the individual, individual physical being and mental consciousness, assisting us in the application of universal knowledge and wisdom in all aspects of our lives, bringing benefits to the realm of service to humanity. Again, very much like the Azestulites, and Rose Sophia, and so many other stones that either I've talked about in other episodes or I am going to talk about soon. Um, using these crystals, Cam says, can connect us to the highest, highest wisdom and allow us to receive specific information or universal truths necessary for our journey to enlightenment. And that's what we're all here for on our journey to enlightenment, to raise the vibration of humanity and the earth. Okay? Thoughts and questions must be clearly defined and projected into the transmitter with an assurance that we are ready and willing to receive, understand, and incorporate the information provided. Now, in the episode I talked about channelers um, and uh, transmitters, there is kind of a order so if you want to go back and listen to those to those segments i would um before you attempt to just go straight into being you know a channeler or a transmitter because um a transmitter 
beams, quote unquote, intellectual resonance out of the source of all knowledge. The clarity of forthcoming information will reflect the clarity and sincerity of the message or question that was sent. Transmitters can be used as such. So Cam orders it, these in, in fives. So here, one, to connect to and align our minds with the higher self in order to further our spiritual development. Two, to consciously arrange for communication with spiritual guides and master teachers. Three, to develop our intuitive and telepathic communicate, communicative abilities. These are amazing stones to work with if you're starting to channel, even though it is a transmitter. Um, it has both because it is a channel or transmitter, it is a great stone to work with if you're learning mediumship, if you're learning to channel, which is basically getting the information from the loved ones during mediumship. Um, four, to send and receive messages. And five, to send thought energy toward the well-being of others and the planet. When programming a transmitter, the most conductive times are sunrise, sunset, the full moon, which is in a couple of days, and period of equinoxes and solstices, as these are when the ethereal plane is most prominent, kind of like during Samhain when the veil is very thin. Um, these stones uh, work best with the ethereal during these times the equinoxes, the solstices, sunset, sunrise, and the full moon. She goes on to say there are many methods through which mechanisms of transmission can be facilitated, so experiment and find the method that works best for you. Now we're going to talk about key crystals. These are things that are on the stone, okay, or on stones, these stones, period. Um, especially the Murians, especially quartz crystals, uh, libraries, not libraries, but light brary. Excuse me, my, my, uh, teeth are a little too big right now. I'm getting them fixed. The key crystals are recognized by an indent or opening in, on the crystal. So the opening becomes narrower. So it's kind of like the crystal penetrates the stone and ends within the crystal. And it's usually an apex termination. The key is used to unlock or open quote unquote doors to healing concepts or concepts that tend to be hidden or illusory. illusory excuse me. It can be used to obtain answers to questions. Place the crystal on any object which contains information relevant to your query and the key crystal will stimulate inner knowledge of the information you seek. When I work with keys, um, and I love time links and i I believe I've spoken about time links in a prior episode with the clear quartzes, um, the keys I like to use, but I don't put them on objects. I kind of put them on chakras, especially my third eye, my crown, I hold on to it. I sleep with it sometimes. I have these amazing um, dreams that I remember, not just one dream, but the five dreams. And that is something that you can definitely train yourself to do. It takes about a month. But if you're interested in dream mediumship, you can always get in touch with me, of course, at Psychic Today with JillRoberts.com. Or you can, you know, sign up for the email you can leave me a voice message wherever you're listening to this or email me jill at psychic today with jillroberts.com and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So we're going to take a break and when we come back, I'm going to talk about this amazing Himalayan library quartz. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Jill Roberts from the show Psychic Today, and I want to talk about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Number one, it's free. 
Number two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Number three, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many other different apps and platforms. You can make money from your podcast, and this is a biggie, with no minimum listening ship. With so many other podcast creators out there that I've tried, I would only use Anchor. I mean, there's there's no fee. It's completely free, and everything is at your fingertips. It's everything you need to make in a podcast in one place. So now download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, that's anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R, dot F-M, or download the Anchor app. And I can't wait to hear your podcast. Welcome back. I'm Jill Roberts, the host of Psychic Today. And now we're going to talk about another stone that vibrationally heightens your consciousness, the earth, and humanity. And that is a Himalayan light brary, which is L I G H T B R A R Y, quartz. And it has a light, smoky tint. It's got amazing etchings and striations. It's elestial. It's embedded with bits of matrix on the raw, but the back is self-healed, and it, it is amazing stone. Again, the pictures of these stones will be on the website, Psychic Today with JillRoberts.com. So, in Cam, from her, her store, Terrasolis, on Etsy, and you can also find her at terrasolace.com, T-E-R-R-A-S-O-L-A-C-E.com. You can also go to Etsy.com and just look up Terra Solace under shops, and you will find an amazing array of different stones. And like I said, when it comes to Lemurians and special quartzes, Cam is the only one I go to. She is my go-to girl. Anyway, so this stone originated in the Himalayan mountains in Pakistan. And it's over a third of a pound, believe it or not. Um, It's very big. It's very wide. It's just an amazing piece to hold for meditation, for channeling, for so many different things. Now, light brary crystals are an elestiated crystal having incredible etchings and striations and are associated with the higher realms. Light brary crystals are very high vibrational crystals thought to store incredible amounts of information, a lot like the Lemurian stones. They offer access to your higher consciousness to keep us moving forward along our path. So with these, we're looking forward. We're not so much looking back. These crystals have a gentle energy, but they're extremely powerful. According to Cam, they have a soothing energy that makes them beautiful additions to meditation and healing work. They are master healers and will work on all levels and chakras. To travel into the crystal, just gaze into it and open up your consciousness and For me, and maybe for you as well, I find the best way to do that is to kind of let my eyes go soft. It's almost like if you're daydreaming and you're just kind of staring at a point on your desk or the wall and your eyes kind of just glaze over, that's the best way to do this type of stuff. When you're looking inside this crystal, you don't want to be so focused and... and, um, and you know laser into it you want to let it come to you you want to quiet down the chatter and by doing this it will do that libraries are said to house the libraries of light 
For healers, they help to bolster confidence in your work and to trust your intuition and abilities. Cam goes on to explain now what elisteals are. They're very powerful crystals known as the enchanted crystal. An elisteal crystal may also be called the cathedral, a skeletal, or I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but a jacari crystal. They sometimes form with a multitude of flat terminations that may appear as stair steps on the surface of the crystal. They can be on top of one another or in random patterns over the crystal itself. Additionally, or otherwise, they can form with skeletal-like structure within the crystal itself. Viewed when, viewed when one looks into the quote-unquote window and senses the depth perception seeing internal geometric patterns that appear to go deep inside the crystal. This is also very somewhat similar to Eric Pepin's from the Higher Balance Institute's In Between. This is a good way to segue into the In Between. And if you'd like to know more about that, again... Just give me an email, jill at psychictodaywithjillroberts.com. So this is known as a skeletal elisteal. Elisteals may also have a series of unusual, unusual etchings, record keepers, or cavities. Elisteals are used to assist in the mass cleansing, healing, and reawakening. The Elysial is known to bring great comfort, assisting in the release of fears and the unknown. They are very helpful to those who may, who may be near the end of their physical existence. So there are many uses for them, but the most common ones Cam uh, puts down are any type of healing, overcoming uh, emotional burdens, bringing the heart and the mind into balance, looking within oneself, stimulation of the actualization of the consciousness, self chakra stimulation, align with the spiritual realm, bring forth previously blocked information, enhance communication, restore emotional and intellectual stability, of course, meditation, and medicine wheel ceremonies. Rutilation of the stone is thought to intensify the power of the crystal. Now, we also have in this particular stone what's called a rainbow quartz. And that's recognized by internal fractures exhibiting prismatic effects, which can and do produce powerful rainbows within the crystal, providing additional crystal energies. So Cam talks about the formation and how it produces the full spectrum of color, the healing white light of perfection being dispersed into the individual rays of the rainbow. This dispersion facilitates the use of the rainbow crystal on any and all chakras to cleanse, to open, and to activate, very much like the red fire zestulite, where you can put it on any chakra and it will seep into the cells and it will cleanse, open, and activate as well. So now, these crystals bring rainbows into one's life, and it's a very special gift from the crystal spirit keeper. Like I said, every crystal is an actual being, not just a rock or a stone. We need to give and have give and take with them. We need to introduce ourselves, get the feeling for what they can contribute and what we can contribute to them, not just take, take, take. They assist with dealing with negativity and to help maintain the constant awareness that love is within life we experience in each moment. Now, she goes on to talk about the vibrations of the number four and its signs correspond to Leo and Virgo. That has a lot to do with Melody. Um, I have one of her books. They are um, quite uh, confusing if you don't know uh, the, the terminology. Um, like the 
numbers that they vibrate to, um, that's getting more into alchemical stuff and astrological things. But um, for a book to just look up two sentences on what a stone does, you know, it's good for that. I prefer Robert Simmons or Judy Hall. Mostly Robert Simmons. I don't agree with a lot of the things that Judy Hall has on, in a lot of her books, but I have no problem with her. So that, those are the two stones I just got that are amazing. Again, I'm going to give you um, Cam's information. So her name is uh, Cam from Terra Solis. And again, that's T-E-R-R-A-S-O-L-A-C-E. And that's terrasolis.com. Or you can go to terrasolis.etsy.com. She has, again, an amazing array of stones. She's so knowledgeable in everything. And without her descriptions of the stones, honestly, I wouldn't know what I was getting. And I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to crystals. So she's my go-to girl for so many things, but especially in the Marines and especially these types of special quartzes and uh, stones. So, um, if you like, definitely check her out. She has a great website. She's got great things and she gets them to you really fast if you live here in the United States. So hold on and I'll be back with a special Zestulite to go along with all of the things we've been talking about these stones. Okay. Stay tuned. Welcome back. As promised, we're going to get through all of these Azestulites. Um, so just to recap, we've done so far in um, other episodes. You can just look at my back catalog. Um, Himalayan gold Azestulite, Amazes, white Azestulite from the United States, Santa Rosa, pink, which is also known as Rhododes, Sinazes, Golden is Estulite, Satuloka Clear, Satuloka Rose, Satuloka Yellow. We did Sorolite, Pink Fire is Estulite in the last ep- episode. We did Red Fire is Estulite in the last, ep- last episode, which both are wonderful for Valentine's Day coming up. And tonight we're going to do the New Zealand White is Estulite. Now, the original Azestulites and those which are still the most popular are the white Azestulite from the USA. The first pieces came from North Carolina and more were later discovered in Vermont. The Azez, which are an angelic group, soul entity that facilitates and supports the mission of Azestulite on Earth, foretold some 27 years ago that more Azestulites would be found around the world. They affirmed that as more people worked with the Zestulite, more of the nameless light energy these stones carry would pour into the earth, thus awakening more stones to carry and spread the nameless light. Their ultimate prophecy is that all quartz in the earth's crust will eventually be filled with this energy, awakening the earth's light body and transforming our world into a planet of light. In the years since our first contact with the Azez, there's, there's been seen um, an occurrence which fulfills this prophecy. And many new Azestulites have been discovered. Now, for the first time in over 25 years, a new white Azestulite has been found. Robert Simmons writes, When I first visited New Zealand, I had no intention of moving here. However, the land spoke to both me and my wife, Kathy, so clearly 
that we are suddenly realized that our destiny involved moving halfway around the world and working to bring forth the stones native to this vibrant land. New Zealand is filled with much spiritual life force, and we feel that this energy should be spread around the earth. They discovered sorolite, which is a beautiful crystallized form of azeshalite, which I've spoken about before, on their very first trip to New Zealand. Later, they found sinazes and honey and cream azeshalites as well. Now, as they move into more remote areas of the country, they have produced a n- new stones, which are simply named New Zealand white azeshalite. Now, New Zealand white azeshalites most definitely carry a pure ray of the nameless light energy. Holding one of these stones in meditation will immediately feel the power pulsations and blissful currents by which all the azeshalites can be recognized. A deep sense of peace fulfills one's subtle body and auric field. And who doesn't need that? You know, one can sense the presence of the vast and benevolent consciousness and you can feel yourself be immersed in a personal bubble of light with, within a great field of loving, living light. These are great stones to work with if you're doing a grounding or a shamanic garden where you're um, r- protecting yourself almost like in a bubble. In a bubble. And they're excellent to do this. Um, as one attunes more deeply to New Zealand's white azeshalite, you can feel filaments of light that spread out from one's light bubble extending around the earth, giving and receiving light in a uh, mutual intention and expansion almost. These new azeshalites emanate a very pure vibration. Their effect is smooth, clear, and and most of all, immediate. The energies fill you up and then they continue to grow until there is a sense that you are overflowing with blissful, peaceful, powerful light. New Zealand white azeshalites are stones with a close affinity to the water element. Most of the pieces which have been found are rounded and smooth, showing that they've spent much time moving within water. So they are almost naturally tumbled. So I have no problem with them, of course. Um, They feel very pleasant to touch. And they immediately work to bring light and healing into the emotional body. As this occurs, one's intuitive capacities are enhanced. One begins to move, uh, not move, I'm sorry. One begins to be more sensitive, let's say to the currents of feeling which constantly flow through us and around us in the wor- in this world. If you're not sensitive to stones, this is a great stone to work with. Um, you can rub your hands together and put one or two, in, one in each hand, or if you only have one, you can, you know, activate your palm and finger chakras, hold on to it during meditation, put it to your heart, It's a great stone to enhance your sensitivity. Um, One sense of awareness of this condition of the emotional bodies of others is heightened. And this enhanced sensitivity is accompanied by compassionate understanding and healing intention. You know, it's my sense that all people who are healers or who wish to be will find that the presence of New Zealand white azeshalite can enhance their ability to help others heal and they'll stimulate the inner healing process in those who come into its presence. This is true on all levels of one's being. Through these stones, they definitely work from kind of like the inside out. They purify, heal, they heal patterns of the innermost core of one's energy field. And this wholeness kind of emanates throughout the whole subtle body and all the way to the physical. If you don't know what subtle bodies are or auras, I have an episode on that as well. (laughs) 
sorry to digress, but just in case there are, you know, um, keywords or information here that you don't understand, and I do have an episode about it, I'm just going to stop what I'm talking about to let you know there is an episode for that. Um, New Zealand <clears throat> white azestulites are stones of joy. Their currents can take one into the field that is the essence of joy, allowing one to release constricted patterns that have formed due to attachments to grief, depression, anxiety, and anger. The currents of these stones work to dissolve negative energy forms of all types, and they can purify one's fields of unhealthy habitual patterns, as well as psychic implants. They work to cleanse the psyche of guilt and shame, and they encourage one to recognize one's essential divine spark. They remind us that our souls are beautiful, and they their aid in manifesting that truth in aspects of our lives is one of the major selling points of this stone. If I were to try to create a single phrase to describe the spiritual quality of New Zealand white azestulite, I'd probably say purity of light. These stones are beautiful, both physically and energetically, and they resonate with the beauty within us. New Zealand white azestulite can rekindle the inner flame of our spiritual light and nourish it by blending its energies with our own. To be with this stone is like walking with an angel beside you. Its presence reminds us that regardless of our inner wounds or our outer circumstances, our essence is divine and our nature is light. New Zealand white azestulite um, combines harmoniously with all other azestulites, especially sorolite, which I've spoken about as well, danberite, which I've spoken about as well, pedalite, rosophia, master shamanite, morganite, kunzite, and rose quartz. For emotional healing, I especially recommend using it in combination with the new blue-green azeshulite. Uh New Zealand white azeshulite also has a natural affinity with green fire azeshulite, and they are sometimes found together in nature. When these are combined, the blissful light within is accompanied by the passionate intensity needed to act powerfully in the world for the good of the whole. Now, I haven't spoken about blue-green or green fire zestulites yet, but they are next on my list. I don't want to hit you with all 20 or however many zestulites we have now, but we have done many so far, and I think this is a perfect stone to go along with the Library Himalayan and the Red Angel Ambifoli Quartz that I got earlier today. So I can't wait to channel with them. I can't wait to hear what you think. You know, just remember, we all deserve to live extraordinary lives. And I'm sending you all my love and light. Have a wonderful day, night, wherever you are. And we'll speak soon.